Yes, yes, you're back with the group chat and we are still on the record with another special for Lymph, the music festival. We are here doing a series of podcasts for Black History Month and I'm flying solo today. Uh, usually my wingman Marcel, MV, would be in the building with me, but do you know what? In this place, we have got a very special, special guest with us today. Uh, she has been definitely one of the breakthrough talents of the last, I'd say, 12, 18 months in the city. Everywhere I'm going, especially when you're on Instagram and stuff, you're hearing her name pop up for the events that she's doing, especially within the music scene at the minute. It's Hannah Lynch, the DJ. How are we doing? You okay? Hi, everyone. Yeah, made up to be here. Excited. Thank you for joining us. Again, we'll just roll just dead, just dead quick, really, and just kind of get some ideas from you. If you was to... I know you, you're DJing and you, you're a bit of a breakthrough in that sense, but if you was to kind of have an unlimited budget right now, you could do what you want with your own lineup. Forget COVID the last six months. You get to put up together your own lineup and your bill for who you're going to DJ and support. Who would you put on that if you had like three or four artists, musicians, other DJs? What would be your dream, dream bill and or dream lineup? Yeah, so I love Georgia Smith, and okay. I probably I probably have a DJs as well. Um, earlier on this year for Miss Bank. Six, 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 I was DJing before she came on and it was amazing. Like the, the whole show was amazing. So I'd definitely choose I'd probably choose Miss Banks still. So when you alright, so I know you we was mentioning off camera before your first um experiences with DJing and it was, you know, a, a family party and you kinda of just had to go with your dad's decks, yeah. so to speak. Did you how did you go from doing that to then opening up for Miss Banks? Like did you have was you nervous at that point in time or was you just Yeah, so when I first tried to do, do that DJing in the garden for the barbecue, I was just, it was like a bit of a joke. Yeah. And then I just like instantly fell in love with it straight away. So the next day I was like, I just I just sat there and I said, Dad, I want to be a DJ. Like, that's what I want to do. And was and, he made up at this point? Because I know you, your dad, he's been on, I think he was just us. I think he was just like shocked because obviously the whole way growing up, he's always been there DJing and I've never ever once said like, let me get involved, let me have a go. So he was a bit shocked, but yeah, he's made up and he's definitely like my biggest influencer <laughs> yeah that's good in the game so and does he I, I think like is he someone that can give you a, offer you a lot of wisdom and advice when like certain things are coming up and like the kind of the, the work that's out there yeah definitely yeah and i think he's just been there like, every step of the way and he's taught me everything i know really yeah so, so and even though i do dj and now like the day that i can scratch like my dad <laughs> <laughs> getting closer though every day we're getting closer <laughs> And in terms of like some of the people that you've worked with already, I know that you you've already done a set for Lymph earlier in the year. Yeah. Uh, for their festival. How how was that working with them and them asking you to kind of get involved? Amazing. Like that was such a big thing for me. So last last year I'd done Lymph VIP but I'd done the VIP part. It was kinda of chilled, but I, I I loved every second of that. But this year obviously it was on like a bigger platform, so more people were gonna see me. Even though it was like virtual or digital, but with my first digital set as well that I've ever done. How did you find that experience? So when I watch it back, like I was a bit like, I didn't know what to do because there's no crowd. So you're there and there's like all the lights are on you, but there's just no one there. So I was just like, what do I do? Do I dance? Do I move? Like, Does that make your job as a DJ a little bit more difficult then? Because, you know, speaking to, when we spoke to your dad, your dad kind of told us, you know, there'll be times when he'll feed off a particular energy in a room or, yeah. you know, in the club that he's in and he's DJing for and, and that energy might prompt him to put on a song that he wouldn't yeah. have already put on potentially. Definitely, you, yeah. Was that, was it harder to gauge or did you just kind of tunnel vision, let me get into my flow and my rhythm and I'll do my yeah, thing? Yeah, I just tried to do that tunnel vision and get into the flow. But yeah, I think that's like a massive part of DJing. So it's okay, like having the skills and you'll be the best DJ ever, but the most important thing is like reading the crowd. Mm. So like creating the atmosphere, but you've got to be able to read the crowds and you've got to be able to read the room. In that sense, you're still performing then as an artist would, aren't you? Yeah. Definitely. And in terms of some of the, I seen, uh, it was on your Insta before, what was it called? It was the all DJ lineup that you done. Um, was it Girls on Top? Was Girls on thing? Top, yeah. Do you Girls find it, as a, as a female in, in the music scene, do you find it a completely different night when you just do an all girls lineup or anything like that? Is the atmosphere any different? Um, not really, no. That's why I, that's why I, like, I'd love to see, like, female DJs on, like, every weekend, it becoming a norm, because, like, female DJs now, amazing, like, smashing yeah. it, and, like, you know what, I find so mad that the amount of people that say to me, 
like you don't look like a DJ and then it's like well what does a DJ look like yeah, yeah, yeah. that just shows that the industry is so male dominated yeah. because I don't look like a DJ like Gaia doesn't look like a DJ or the female DJs they don't, they don't look like a DJ because they're not a man yeah, yeah. so it, it, it's still do you feel like you're still kind of breaking that stigma almost at the, at the minute even though you kind of broke through and the city's kind of embraced you Um. Yeah, I feel like Liverpool has been really supportive though, like as a whole, like Liverpool, this city is really supportive. Um, yeah, and more things are coming across. Like, so like me and Guy had done a back-to-back. Okay. A couple, we've started doing... You've like, got quite a good little chemistry, sets, like, uh, I'm yeah. not even going to guess, she's in the room anyway, do you know what I mean? She's <laughs> in the building. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Guy, I know you guys have got a really good relationship at the moment. How have you... How, where did that kind of come come from? Is it just the kind of solidarity girls sticking together or, or or what is it? So we'd seen each other a few times, like in the club and stuff, um, followed each other on Instagram, but then she messaged me. And you know what, when she messaged me, I was made up because going back to when I first started DJing, although there was so much support from like my other, me, other male DJs out there, there was no like other girl that I could speak to and be like, just just speak to anything about DJ and so when she messaged me I was made up because like, she's breaking through and like I'm here to support her. I had I wanted to know that like anything she needs I'm here like that's possible I, I think as well it's building <clears throat> that network and then that you have got as you said before it was with an industry being so male dominated <clears throat> it is really important that you have got a, a network that's like-minded but obviously yeah. kind of reflects um who you are as well and obviously we just both being females in that sense you can both kind of pioneer it together and yeah. two voices are always louder than one so definitely think he's a he's a making some noise in some big waves would you just stick to the black music in terms of your r&b and your kind of your drill your hip-hop when you when you're spinning or are you quite diverse in what you'll do do you know what i mean you'll appeal to a broader audience with like some funky house and house stuff is yeah are you just kind of a mixed bag with it all yeah so on a daily, I listen to mostly R&B and UK rap and stuff like that, but I don't know, I've just got this thing about house music, so when I'm mixing house music, I just have such a love, I have so much love for it. I just, I don't know what it is, like, I wouldn't, like, sit there and listen to house music all day, but as soon as I'm on the decks and I'm playing it, I love it. Is that an energy thing, it's you like, think, with I house? Think it's, I think it must be, sure, yeah. I used to work, I used to work in town, and I'm the same, like, I'll never go home and like have a, a house playlist playing on in the background yeah. like, and it'd be you know hip-hop oh, r&b no. whatever it is throwback music i'll listen to that in my own time but the second i'm out in town you know from the years when i used to work there and stuff yeah i wouldn't know the name of the song or who the producer was or anything because it was a house tune i'd know the beats and i'd know the little lyrics that had come yeah, in every yeah, now yeah. and again <laughs> and i'd kind of just vibe with it every single night and i, I always think that's it's the energy the house brings that yeah, makes it. It's infectious. It gives almost. you like a buzz, especially when you when you're like in control of the music for the crowds and you see the way they act. So when you drop when you drop a song, the best feeling ever. So what's been feeling. your best reaction in that sense? Then like, have you got any like highlights from like when you've you've left the set and you've absolutely been buzzing because you know you've smashed it? I'd say probably. So I work at in at Jaleel. I'm a resident at Jaleel on Victoria Street. And I'm a re- R and B resident there, so what I'll do is I'll play R and B for like till ten till twelve. But one, one we had to do ten till four. Mm-hmm. So obviously I, I I had to play house because it's a house club. So I ended up playing house for like four hours, and I just slipped. I left, and I was on such a high like because that's the first that's the first night I've ever been able to play house like fully through like that. And the crowd vibe and loved it. everyone loved it, and like obviously like the manager of the club say it was saying I smashed it and stuff, and I was just like. This is just the best feeling ever. So how did you end up with the, like a residency then? How, how like again you just you keep doing stuff that at levels that people that take sometimes years to accomplish, no matter what scene or city respectively that they're doing it in. You know there will be some DJs in London that will be working the sets, be working circuits for years, and they still won't have themselves a residency. Do you think it's because Liverpool's a smaller city and it's close knit? It's who you know, and, and yeah. that can be such a big impact. Do you think that's helped you in some senses? Yeah, and I'd say when I started DJing as an R&B female DJ, I didn't know any other R&B female yeah. DJ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was like, so that was, that's going back yeah. like years ago now, but yeah. yeah, like I didn't, I could never, I could never have sat there and said, oh, I'll go and speak to her about it, because I didn't know any other R&B female DJs at the time. So once you started smashing it, you, it's kind of, 
it's a no-brainer then really, isn't it, for all the promoters and, and all the, the club owners. If yeah. they want that kind of night and you want that vibe, there's, there's a, if a handful of people, if that, that will be able to do it and smash it and you've kind of just worked your way straight to the top of that pile. Yeah. I think that's sick. And in terms of your own plans and identity, because as I say, having that influence of your dad and kind of seeing his career unfold as you've kind of grew up, do you feel like you're one step ahead of some people in terms of like certain opportunities that potentially could come your way and like you want to kind of do things in your own direction because of the things you've seen and your experiences that you've seen from your dad? Yeah, well, I feel like I have come a long way like over the years, but I've got I've still got so much to do. I've still got like I've I'm I'm not even halfway through the journey. I've got, there's so much I want to do. Like this. Yeah. That's a good thing. Every, well, I, I think that's a good thing. You, I don't even think you're halfway through the journey from what I'm saying. I, I know there's... I'd say if I got any sense of you, you're still very raw, but the kind of the world yeah. that you're feeding in that sense, you, yeah. you, you're honing your craft. And then from honing your craft, you've been given a lot of platforms to obviously show off the talents as well. And I think that's really important. And I think more than anything else, I feel like sometimes the city needs good positive symbols for people to say, yeah, these things can be done. So... I know that it's you've got a, a particular passion in leading the way for the next generation and not just necessarily wanting that to stop with yourself. Yeah. So you're taking it one step further and you do private lessons as well, don't you? One-to-ones. Yeah, so the one-to-ones that, like, taken off now. Um, and I would say, like, I get a buzz from doing DJ and obviously going to the club and doing it, but doing the one-to-ones, seeing, like, how much my students, like, progress over time, that is, like, a different kind of buzz, like... It's amazing. It's amazing. It's the best feeling. It, it, it's even like I'd say it was even like on level than the feeling that I feel when I'm actually doing it myself in the club. So, you, right, the, the the DJs or the budding DJs that you you tutor in that sense, then uh, are the your core group are they male or female? A mix, really. A yeah. Mix yeah. So there are a few more girls yeah. coming through then. But I've just had a thirteen-year-old girl put her first mix out. Sick. And it's me, and it is so so good. And what uh, style? What, like what kind of music is it? R and B, it is. R and B, yeah. yeah. Okay, sick. So, but seeing like so, she's been coming now for about four or five weeks. So seeing seeing her progress over time, it's been amazing. And what goes into that then? Because the teaching's pro, it's got to be a completely different ball game than just rocking up with your equipment, with your stuff, and kind of as you were saying before, the tunnel vision to just get a job done. Mm. How, do you have to kind of change? Because I couldn't teach anybody to do anything because I just lose, I get so frustrated when people like, I remember I used to learn the piano when I was a kid and I was awful at the piano. I must have, I was thinking I've done it for about, say about three months. And you know when you just got to teach you that like, doesn't give you the time to explain why you've got to do certain things in order yeah, for yeah, the yeah. piano to sound the way you want it to sound. Yeah. Like she just didn't have, necess- she didn't have the time for me and I was eight years of age and I just couldn't <laughs> digest it. So I've never, never learned how to play a chord or nothing like that. Do you feel like you have to kind of tailor your approach depending on either the age range or the, yeah, the experience definitely, yeah. of the people you work with? Because I've, ne- I've never done teaching before. Before I started doing these lessons, I'd never ever taught before. But I, th- I think it's like DJ and like the more you do it, the more confident you get. So the first lesson that I've done, I can't lie, like I, the the kid left and I was like, oh, Dad, I don't think I'll be doing them anymore. Like. <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> so it was, it's like the kid was looking at me like, but then they came back again. And the more people I've had, the more like I've grown in confidence to it. But it is, it's like every DJ set you do. Like if I went back, if I go back to my first set that I done, I don't think I moved. I was frozen like that, like <laughs> pressing the buttons, like it literally didn't move. But it's the same with the teacher. Like the more you do it, the more confident you you get. Yeah, so you, you kind of own, as we were saying before, you kind of own in that um, performance element to it as well and kind of yeah. feeding off the energy of the crowd. And does that get you through a lot of them? Did that first one, I said this to the Michael Harvey lads the other day, when you do kind of go from that, you're doing it for your family parties and stuff and you're doing it yeah, for your yeah, friends yeah. and stuff like that yeah. and you're just kind of just showing off in that first day to go and to do it for people that have probably paid to be in the venue, have expectations that it's going to be a sick night. Are you just going off adrenaline? Does adrenaline just get you through those first couple of sets? Adrenaline, yeah, because you're just so nervous. Like, I think now I probably would DJ anywhere, but 
I'm always like, I'm always a little bit nervous before every set, but not like what I was at the start. Like I used to be fully shaken, but then even now, like me and Gaia done a back to back a couple of weeks ago, and I was shaking, but I was tapping Gaia, saying like I'm not shaking like because I'm nervous. I'm shaking because I'm the yeah. adrenaline rush. Yeah. Like I've got so much energy in me that that's why I'm shaking. <laughs> okay, so when I think of because I've never been, and I'll always hold my hand up for this. I've never been to Ibiza. I've, I've, I've never done a, like a conventional party. Island in that sense. I know, I know your face like that. What? <laughs> Have you, you got me sat with Gary? <laughs> no, but that's the truth. I'm just, I'm just not that type of person. But I under, like from, you know, being that agent and, and wanting to to go on holiday to kind of have those wild holidays, girls holidays, lads holidays. Is that something that you're kind of like itching to do? You want to do a big set and I'd be for it. Yeah. Like, of course, yeah, yeah, that's my goals, yeah, definitely. Would you, again, would you want a residency in IB for at some point? Would that be something that, like, you, you, if, if someone would twist your arm and said, right, yeah, we're going to do, like, the murky shutdown, whatever it was. <gasps> <just> like, <laughs> oh, I'd die. <laughs> so but that was the right thing that I said there, yeah, that's it. I'd be fully <laughs> shaking the whole set, probably. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they're the type of things that, like, you would eventually look yeah, to of course, and branch yeah. out to and do stuff. Yeah. I think that that's such a shame because I know, even we was mentioning before, Sasha, I know that he's been DJing for a while now as well. And he was due to be in um, IB for this year before obviously all yeah. the COVID stuff happened. So I feel like that has threw such a spanner in the works for the industry as a whole. I, I, it's hard not to talk to people at the moment that are creatives and not kind of talk over the impact of that. I know you've still been very active, but have you have you found a challenge in yourself? Yeah, it's so challenging. But I feel like in Liverpool especially, the, the artists, even though we've been, all this stuff's been going on, it's been a madness, but I feel like Liverpool artists have really been, like, still going in, doing as much as they can with every with all everything that's been going on yeah. around them. Like, I've done Blackfest um, on the weekends, and yeah. I couldn't believe, like, how much, like, how much talent there is in Liverpool at the minute. I think that was because, from the outside looking into it, especially the music scene, and again, I'm not a musician in that sense, but we kind of commentate on it quite frequently. And, you know, I, I live with a musician at the minute, so I, I know his four process and things. Yeah. I think a lot of people from Liverpool had a clear 2020 vision. And yeah. COVID or not, it was still getting executed. Yeah, definitely, So, like, yeah. th that's what I've loved about it. And that's what I've loved to watch, to see, like, there was a challenge and everyone was like, right, boom, studios, bars, clubs, they're all going to be shut. And everyone was like, sound, we'll get on the, you know, the, the, the Zoom calls or we'll get live on. Live streams. And we'll have yeah. live streams and we'll do all these kind of things on the Instagram. You know, we've had people doing Q&As on Instagram and all that kind yeah. of stuff. I just thought, that's what we've needed. Even though, even though, as I say, it's always great to be in the moment and have those 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 moments and memories. Yeah. I still think the way we can kind of collate everything now and that's the, being fortunate of having things digitally we rarely not shied away from the opportunities that was in front of us. And I think that's one of the positives that I take away from it. Um, yeah, definitely. Just looking at things from the nightclub side of things, as a girl, this is one thing I probably don't, I don't speak to enough girls that, that go out in town when then obviously you're in town and everyone in town at the time is probably drunk and intoxicated and stuff. But what is your idea of like a good night out for a girl? If you're a DJ, that vantage point of like you being a DJ and having being behind the decks what is good etiquette for like people because we spoke to your dad about this you know you're getting mad requests off people and asking you to do stuff oh. and play this tune i'm about to get off and all that kind of stuff like what do you feel goes into making a good night for for the city that we're in at the minute like what are the key ingredients again i'd say it's mostly like about reading the crowd like you don't you don't know till you're there okay like I can't when I when I first started DJing, I'd have like a full on set list ready, and I'd be like, "This is what I'm playing tonight." You could tell. You and that. no matter what, that's what I'm playing. Like, it wouldn't matter. And now I wouldn't even before I go to the club, I would never even plan what I'm going to play because you have to get there and read the crowds and know what's going on. You've got, you've got to like be in the atmosphere to decide what what song you're going to play next. Like. Yo, you can definitely tell you've been taught by that because that was his answer as well. <laughs> was it? Even he, said, he said he's had experiences where he's been and he's, he's had his, oh. you know, his collection of records that he knows he's going to spin and then he's rocked up, he's read the room and been like, dash no. that, I'm going with this instead. So I feel like... It, Do you know what? Me and my dad have spoke about this so many times as well. Like, we'll come in both from our night from DJing and we'll just sit there like laughing, talking about that. You must have some really good stories with each other now as well, especially like kind of him watching you following his footsteps and like 
because again, he, I don't want to keep bringing it back. If you haven't already seen uh, the group chat podcast with DJ Two Kind, please do go check it out because it'll give you a lot of reference to what we're talking about right now. But I think when he was saying stuff like he enjoyed that kind of the energy and being able to feed off the energy in the room, he enjoyed that as opposed to having that fixed, fixed this is what yeah, I've got yeah, to do. Yeah. So that kind of worked for him. And I think as he was saying, as he was getting older, um, you won't mind me saying that as he was getting older, people are asking him, is he still going to be DJing? Are you still going to, you know, are you still going to keep going? We need someone to represent for the scene. We yeah. still need the L100. What's going to happen? And I think he's quite relieved to know that, like, even though he's not directly past the bat and it's in transition, but it's in good yeah. hands as well. And like, we, all, we, all, we always joke about because I'll get asked to do something and then he'll go, oh, I better check my junk emails. <laughs> 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 well, yeah, I know way. that he's made up for me everything that I do. I can just tell like he, he is proud of me. No, definitely. Um, so before we wrap up, again, I just wanted to to thank you for coming down. But if you wanted to kind of say what you know your plans are for the future or any goals moving forward for yourself, what what would they be? So for the future, I'd want to I want to really get into like community work. Okay. Because I think like there's so many girls out there that want to get into DJing, but they just don't know where where about to start, and it's not easy because obviously like even like getting the equipment and stuff, it it's not cheap, mm -hmm. so it's not it's not like an easy game to get into. But I feel like if me and Gaia have got something going on at the minute, so we're, we're planning something at the minute, which is in the woodworks, um, with culture there. Sick. So hopefully soon we can get that on but well, i know everything's going on it's all a madness but hopefully soon we can get that going it'll be um, all female workshops dj workshops oh sick nice so again that's it kind of building that network and obviously kind of leading the way really because as you're saying even growing up <clears throat> as a as a lad interested in music i didn't see any kind of dj workshops or anything like that that yeah. even you know i feel like that's one of the things Liverpool has struggled with over the years, kind of finding other outreaches for, you know, young people, kind of people as well, kind of less less well off, I should say, to try and have those opportunities rather than just hanging around and being out on the streets. I feel like it's yeah. you'd get so much more out of building your skills, building confidence as well, because from what you're saying, those first kind of sets where you just stood there and you're just pressing <laughs> your buttons to get into the point where you're kind of owning it and you you know you're going yeah. back to back with your girl like now i struggle to like stay still but back then <laughs> but i literally just like froze for a young person <laughs> i feel like that could be such a big confidence boost because yeah a lot of people you know teenagers especially with everyone you know head focused on the phones and stuff a lot of people have anxiety and, and yeah. stuff like that and they haven't got that kind of self-esteem Whereas if you're doing something like that, and again... You can find yourself through music and through doing that. Yeah, 100%. And I, I think that it would be so so impactful. I might even, when you get them set up, I might even send me a little sister. Yeah, definitely, yeah. She, well, she's 15. So I she feel loves like music. She, yeah, yeah. She used to try and sing and stuff like that as well. as you know, I feel like most kids, not even girls, I feel like most kids all sing at some point. Um, but yeah, definitely. She, 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 I think she'd be well into that get on the decks at some point so yeah, yeah that'll I'll be have amazing to, I'll have to hit you guys up at some point and be like yo hook, 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 hook. <laughs> um, so yeah as I say thank you very much I know you've been really busy and I know we was asking a lot by getting you down but I think you've actually smashed it you've nailed it oh thank you um, so much and again we kind of just keep looking forward to seeing your progress and hopefully and say this will be like the first DJ set all over again slightly nervous but when you come back to the group chat like give us a, a recap of where you are in 10 12 18 months time you'll be with us just like you are with the music at the minute so thank you again yeah, thank for your you time. so much as thank i say you. guys this is another on the record special uh for lymph music festival you've been hosted by your boy errol at the group chat and we look forward to seeing you soon